Because it's streaming, yeah. you will have to speak into the microphone. Is this the thing that you're going to pass? Either that one or that one. Okay. Okay. Because otherwise it doesn't... You, they, we won't you can hear it in the room, but they won't yeah. hear it anywhere else. The folks back home. Yeah. Okay, so good evening, everybody. Thank you uh, for joining us. Um, my name is Michael Weger. I'm Chief Executive of the Board of Deputies. We have people here in the room, and there are people who are watching on the live stream. Thank you all for joining us. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Sinai Synagogue, uh, the uh, Reform Synagogue in Leeds, for hosting us. Really appreciate it. Um, I'd like to thank CST, who are uh, protecting the building outside. Really appreciate that. I would certainly like to thank um, all of our candidates who have travelled here from London, Manchester, anywhere else, well, those sorts of areas, really appreciate that. And I really a big thank you to Simon Meissen, uh, who, had, who is chair of the Leeds Jewish Rep Council, who is going to be chairing the proceedings, the way the evening will work. There'll be hustings now for the president of the board. Uh, then we'll do a quick... Uh, switch over and we'll do hustings for the vice president of the board and the whole evening should take two hours and there'll be questions that Simon will have there'll be questions from the floor and there'll be questions that have been sent in uh, online and so thank you very much i'll hand over to simon now good evening everybody and welcome to leeds um for those of you who have the misfortune to be viewing this online uh, still welcome to leeds and you really should have made the journey <laughs> um, as the candidates have um, they have been uh, predetermined by electronic means uh, to appear in the following order in so far as the uh, introduction is concerned uh, amanda michael sheila and phil and in the best traditions of hustings, it will be in reverse order at the end. Um, not quite. Oh, not quite in reverse. No, you're right. Not quite in reverse order at the end, but close to reverse order. Um, we'll hear everybody for 90 seconds at the beginning. I am not the person with the stopwatch, but there is a red and a green card. <laughs> Don't know if you can see it on the screen, but they're currently being displayed by my gorgeous assistant. Um, <laughs> And after that, we will take the questions and have the discussion. So, um, Amanda, it is over to you. Let me pass the microphone. Thank you. Can everyone hear me? No problem. Good. Am I ready to go, Sarah? Terrific. Good evening, everyone. I'm Amanda Bowman, and I want to be your president and build a stronger, more united community that celebrates and supports our rich diversity and heritage. As your vice president for the last six years, I've been honored to serve you, earning your trust and securing the welfare of our community. As your president, our board of deputies will tackle immediate threats head on and will empower both deputies and our communities to shape a vibrant Jewish life in the UK. At a time when the risks to social cohesion are so great, and when events in Israel and Gaza feed polarization here, I'll continue to protect the freedoms, rights, and security of British Jews. The anti-Semitism you've witnessed here in universities in Leeds over the last few weeks has been completely shocking, and I commit to be more present for you to listen and help you to do whatever is necessary to build our community's trust with public bodies. While the temptation might be to hunker down, I want us to look outwards, to build bridges across our community, to, across our communal organizations, and of course, across all deputies, young and old, left and right, of all denominations, to deliver our work strategically in a spirit of openness, transparency, and respect. There are many different ways to lead, and my approach is one of collaboration. And so you'll see my presidency will create a space where every deputy has a voice. And I ask you to back me for a better board, build a future where our Jewish identity flourishes, where our voices are heard, and where our community stands proud and strong. Thank you. Deputies, ladies and gentlemen, Simon, thank you. 
We are in the fight of our lives to ensure British Jews can continue to live without fear in this country. We must continue to flourish, contribute, and play our part in civil society. The frightening challenge of the rise of anti-Semitism shown by the swastikas at London's Saturday March and the continued attempts to disrupt our daily activities. The cost of living crisis hit our community hard, leading to real poverty in many areas. This is time for outstanding, experienced and real leadership. My style is to listen, embrace and then lead from the front. In the last year, I travelled to over 200 schools in many regions and heard many opinions. I've been part of communal regional life for many years and I will represent your views. I've met outstanding deputies with great skills and they need to be involved and empowered. We need an inclusive anti-Semitism programme of every aspect of life and I already have a plan in place with people to manage it. Now is the time to stand up and not cosy up. I will ensure a balance across the spectrum of views. I want younger deputies to play their part. They will build the next generation together with regional representation. With your support, I want to lead a team which harnesses the energy of our deputies, defends our right to live peacefully and pushes back against the worrying levels of Jew hatred. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Sheila. Thank you. My name is Sheila Gewalb, and I'm standing to be president of the Board of Deputies of British Jews. I have been vice president, senior vice president, and for the last three years, I have chaired the Board's Outreach Education Working Group. For over 40 years, I have travelled the length and breadth of the UK, speaking to thousands of non-Jewish school children to explain about our beliefs, practices and culture, to help dispel the myths and misconceptions that can lead to Jew hate. Sometimes I come across a young child who proudly declares, I'm part Jewish, and that's wonderful. But now they tell me, since October the 7th, their parents tell them when they go to London, don't tell anybody you're Jewish because there'll be trouble. It breaks my heart, and it has to stop. The board has been invisible in protecting and defending our community since October the 7th. We have to be so much stronger. As president, I would have three priorities. First of all, we need to challenge the lies and the biased reporting we see and hear every day on the TV and read in the newspapers. We need to shout louder than our enemies. What are we afraid of? Who are we afraid of? Secondly, we need to educate about being Jewish and about Israel. And thirdly, we need to utilize the skills and experiences of all our deputies all over the UK to be loud and proud to be British Jews. Thank you. I'll go with that. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Phil. Good evening. I'm Phil Rosenberg. We all know that we face an unprecedented challenge in terms of the massive rise in anti-Semitism against the backdrop of Israel's war of defense against Hamas. And in Leeds, we've seen that particularly acutely. I was meeting earlier today with Rabbi Zachariah Deutsch, uh, the chaplain at Leeds University. We know what his family has been through and what the students have been through. But they haven't responded to it by cowering away. They, a few weeks ago, they held a Hachna Sefer Torah celebration of a, a Torah scroll. And a new organization has been set up, The Table, that promotes Jewish culture. Truly, Leeds leads against anti-Semitism. I want to replicate this around the country. So this week, week I launched uh, 10 pledges for regional communities that will include in numbers an £100,000 fighting fund a year to support activism in regional communities, 200 copies of the Jewish Living Experience exhibition so that we can tackle anti-Semitism and build bridges of understanding, and 300 deputies empowered around the country to advocate to their local MPs, their local faith leaders, and their local media so that we can expand that activism and reach around the country. As president, I'll expand the board's reach, relevance, and impact right across the country, and that's why I ask for your vote on the 12th of May. Thank you. Right. Let me do it this way. Um, I have questions, obviously, of my own. I have questions that people have sent in to me. Uh, but as uh, all of you have taken the trouble to leave the house on a wet and windy evening, if there are any people here who have a question at this stage, just put your hand up and you may ask it. 
Yes, now, in order to do that, we're going to give you a mic. Because this is being live streamed, we need you to speak into the microphone because otherwise only the people in the room can hear you and the people who are listening in can't. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm losing my voice. I'm Helen, and... I'm Helen. Um, I'm listening carefully, um, and especially the section on... Um, speaking out to children in schools, which is what I do when I get an invitation. I, I had quite a few invitations before Christmas, Hanukkah, and um, I didn't have any problems, but I was very apprehensive because I go far south in Yorkshire, really far, uh, for some reason. That, that, that's how I get invited. But I have one coming up very soon, and I'm extremely apprehensive. I don't know the school. I did speak to other teachers who go into schools um, and they are also very apprehensive now because you just don't know what you're going to face. I just wonder if each of you could take that approach and give me confidence and it might expand our understanding of your thinking. Thank you very much, Helen. I'm going to start with Sheila and just move down the line. Helen, that's amazing that you're doing that work. I just have a minute to answer you, but I would be very happy to help you afterwards. First of all, if a school has invited you in, that's a really good sign. I've gone to schools where they used to go to synagogues and they don't go anymore, but they want us in. So you talk to the teachers, you find out what the children have already learned, okay? You ask to see some of their work. You can be guided as to what they want you to talk about. Okay. Okay. I understand. If they've asked you in, then they, are, they want you there, okay? Be prepared for questions about Israel and Gaza. Explain. No, we mourn the loss of all innocent lives. Nobody wants fighting. Everybody wants peace. But you're not there today to speak about that. You're just there today to interact with the children and explain about the rich, wonderful things we have to, to you know, to, to uh, celebrate as part of being Jewish, okay? And kol chahavabod for doing that work. And I'm happy to speak to you afterwards. Thank you, Helen Kolakavod, to you. Um, we, we need to clone you 300,000 times um, because actually this is really what we need to do as a community. We need to improve education. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was speaking at Watford Boys School, which is now a Muslim majority uh, school, and about Muslim-Jewish relations going into the future. As Sheila, very happy to give you my details and talk about some of the questions I was asked to help you prepare. And what we need to do as the Board of Deputies is create an information bank to train our deputies and the wider community on the questions that might come up and create easy to use resources so that we as a whole community are better prepared for the conversations we might have in schools, in our workplace and elsewhere. As a community, we've always needed to punch above our weight, now more than ever. Thank you for what you're doing and we need to empower everyone to be able to do what you're doing. So thank you. Amanda. Thank you. The board is just about to launch um, from September onwards, a new resource about uh, Judaism, Jewish living online. Um, and in the, in the development of that resource, we now have a huge amount of, uh, of material that we can share more widely. We, we know that, that it will be an online resource, but we know that as a result of having that, that more and more schools are going to be asking for Jewish people to come in and follow up that. And so... Um, right now, you can talk to Sheila. You can also talk to our education officer who can support you and give you the resources and the confidence to go in. And I would, I would definitely advise you to do that. Um, but I would also say that um, I would also be looking to both provide training but also some kind of quality control so that you feel confident that you are, you've got the information and that anyone going into, into schools has a level of ability and confidence to be able to deliver to the children. Thank you. Helen, uh, I wish you all the very best when you uh, go to the school. Um, it's really important that the board is here to help you. Uh, and I heard Amanda just talk about the education department uh, and being able to talk to them and they should be able to give you information that will help you and give you confidence. I've used them on a number of occasions and they give you some great facts and worksheets. In particular, 
it's important about the Jewish religion, explaining about Jewish life, uh, explaining about Jewish history, and it's really interesting, all this uh, information for young people. And obviously Israel, uh, which you must also talk about as part of an overall package to the children. Uh, I wish you all the very best, and thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions at the moment from the floor? Don't worry, I will ask again. Yes. Just wait for the mic, sorry. I was Bream, and I'm a deputy for Pinner United Synagogue, and I've just come for a visit to Leeds to, s to see what you're all up to here. Okay. Um, my question is, I'm very impressed with all of what you all said, but I'd like to know how you plan to fund some of your great ideas. Right, well, we are going to just move it down the line. So we'll start with Phil and we'll end with Sheila and then everybody should know what order they're going in, I hope. That's brilliant. And it's an important question. Uh, I think you know, Ruth, that I chaired the Communal ta ta Community Contribution Task Force earlier this year with a series of recommendations. I want to see those recommendations implemented. Specifically, on the £100,000 uh, fund, I've spoken to the incoming treasurer, Ben Crown, as well as to, to Michael about the possibility of doing this. That is doable. On the 200 um, Jewish Living Experience exhibitions, I've costed that program out. That's going to cost about a million quid. And I started speaking to donors who are prepared to fund that substantially. They've said certainly that they're prepared to look at it. People who can contribute something akin to that or a large part of it. So I think we, we lead with ambition. We lead with excitement. We can't have any sort of uh, managed decline. We want to go for growth. And I'm really excited by what we can achieve if we show the level of ambition to rise to the challenge. So that's, that's the plan. Thank you. Amanda. Thank you, Simon. Um, Ruth, thank you for that question. Um, well, clearly, the more members the board has and the more attractive we are for membership, the more income we, re we receive. The more people that pay their communal contribution, the more income we receive. But we have to diversify our funding. Um, and we probably have to diversify our funding beyond philanthropy. We need to be... Uh, funding our programs because they make sense to funders, not just because uh, we're a donation. Um, and so I'll be looking to do that. There is no magic money tree, but so much of what we do will actually contribute to social cohesion. And so there'll be lots of pots that we could be feeding into, and we need to be much smarter and fitter to raise that money and then to meet those targets that we, we are setting ourselves. Thank you. Uh, as you, thank you, Ruth, for your question. As you know, I'm the treasurer. When I took over as treasurer, uh, we were running at quite a large deficit per month. Uh, I am pleased to say that we've now got ourselves back to a break-even situation. Um, going forward, um, the plans are that, from my perspective, is that we're going to need a large amount of money for anti-Semitism. Um, it's going to come from two routes. Number one, by selling the story to the synagogues, going out to the synagogues, visiting them, which I have been doing regularly uh, over the course of the last year. And they're interested in what we're talking about. And, and hopefully from there we'll get some fundraising uh, out of increased communal contribution. The second area is that I have been talking to a number of people who have said that they will support me um, with an anti-Semitism plan uh, for the future of the Board of Deputies. We cannot use the money out of our reserves. That is absolutely a non-point to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Oh, I'm so... You're absolutely right. I'm terrible. No, it's my Little fault. me on the end. Okay. Yeah, I just want to echo what Amanda said about, you know, um, our main source of funding is a communal contribution. What Michael said, we need to go out to synagogues. It's all very thing. We trotted it all out before. We really do need to get out there and explain the work of the board. We need a programme of visits proactive program for all honorary officers and all vice chairs to have a regular program annually to go out to bring in the communal contribution from those shuls who have deputies who don't actually collect it for us. They need to understand not what does the board do for me, who's my deputy, I hear all this stuff, we need to have conversations. I was on the dinner committee, I ran the dinner, the board's annual fundraising dinner for six years. I used to go out 
personally and speak to fundraisers. And we've lost the impetus since COVID. We need, you know, two strands. Again, we're all talking about the same thing, but we need energy and passion to do this. And I can offer that. Yes, Hayden. Hayden Cohen, I'm going to be the new deputy for Harrogate Hebrew Congregation as of the 1st of June. <laughs> that was unexpected. Um, <laughs> Deserved, though. Um, what, what, are you, what methods are you going to use to uh, represent the Jewish community outside of London? Right, that was a question that was bound to come up, but I'm glad a deputy's asked it. Um, so we're going to start with Amanda um, and move to Michael and then to Sheila and then to Phil, who comes from London. <laughs> okay, so if, if half of British Jews live in London, the other half don't live in London, and so we can't possibly be representative across the whole of British Jewry if we're not representing the regions. I've said in my manifesto that I'm going to be a listening, empowering deputy uh, president. And so um, we absolutely need to do more to make sure that you're sharing good practice around, that we're finding ways to hear from everyone um, outside of London. And my presidency and my honorary officers, my vice presidents are going to be doing monthly surgeries out in the regions, in your communities, coming to you to hear both from you as deputies, from your regional representative councils, and also from, from uh, the community. Talk to my division. Uh, I have five people on my division that, uh, from the regions, so I know what's needed because I'm hearing from them. And so um, I think we just need to do more. There are 300 deputies and uh, we need to hear more from you. Hayden, good luck, and uh, I look forward to coming to see you in Harrogate. Um, what are we going to do, or what am I going to do? As far as the regions are concerned, they're an important part of the community. Um, one of the things I've suggested is that we will have sub-regional meetings so that we can bring the people together from smaller areas. Uh, we will have larger regional meetings on a regular basis, and as far as London is concerned, we're going to try and have a number of meetings a year where we can bring people both to London and also for London to come out to some of the regions. So that's one of the plans that I've got. I've talked about listening, embracing, and empowering. And that is, for me, really important. We've got some absolutely fantastic deputies that I've been talking to and that I've met outside of London, on the edges of London, and outside in the provinces. And we're going to get them involved and get them part playing in the different organisations that I will be setting up. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Sheila. Hayden, Noswath Da, Sheila Giewold, Cardiff United Synagogue, proud regional deputy for 15 years, vice chair of the regional assembly. I want to know why we cancelled this year's plenary weekend. I understand the weekend. We should have gone to Glasgow and Edinburgh. Uh, we're going to go to other places. It has to stop. It doesn't need to be con con contingent on how many people are going to go. Okay? The board needs to commit to going out, having plenaries, having meetings out in the regions. Regional deputies need to be encouraged to stand. Please God, you'll stand for a divisional election for next year to work with one of the divisions, you know. We have, like Amanda was saying, we do have Zoom now, so you don't have to come to London for meetings. Uh, and it's, you know, we need to actually work and embrace the fact that you want to be involved. And it's wonderful. I have a niece living in Harrogate. So it's, it's wonderful, yeah, and it's just great to meet you. Thank you. Well, Mazal Tov Hayden and welcome aboard. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I think I'm the only candidate to have come up with a 10-point plan for regional communities. And first of all, it's not about, it's about, as among other things, learning. You know, there's an amazing community here. The Rep Council is doing brilliant things. Um, and as I said, leads, leads, leads against anti-Semitism. We've got a lot of things that we could be learning from different communities. And the first part of that is listening better. So at board meetings, I'll be instituting an independent chair so that we actually get the best from deputies at those meetings. I'll be changing the times of those meetings or reviewing the times 
so that we actually um, can make sure that regional deputies can get to the meetings. And I want to institute a kiddish at the end of the board meeting so that we can begin to, deputies can begin to socialize and share best practice. As I mentioned, we'll back up the, um, I recruited Sara Radovan to be our first ever regional manager, but we need to do more. As I mentioned, 100,000 pounds to support regional activism, 200 Jewish living experience exhibitions around the country to improve education and outreach, and 300 deputies empowered in every part of the country to so that we can scale up our activism to a new level. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and if you attend by Zoom, your kiddish will be sent to you by <laughs> kiddish in a box. Royal kiddish Mail in a box. special kiddish. delivery. Yes. Um, right. Any other questions from the floor at this stage? No. One question apiece until we've gone. I'm not saying we won't go round again, but one question apiece. So let me ask some questions, please. And. Um, as one of the best advocacy tips I was ever given was be brief, mm -hmm. I'm going to invite you to reply in one word. <laughs> um, so what I'd like to know from each of you is this. There are external challenges to the Jewish community in this country, and there are internal challenges. And I'd just like you to identify what you think are the greatest external and the greatest internal challenge, not necessarily to the board, although it can be if you like, but to the Jewish community more widely. Now I'm going to pause because it's not fair to not give you a bit of time to think, especially as I've only asked for one word. Um, and I'm going to start, and this might be unfair, uh, with Phil because you are the most professional speaker um, and so I think it's reasonable that we handicap it in that way. I'm not trying to be difficult. External anti-Semitism, internal continuity. Well, that was brief. <laughs> no, hold on. Yeah. Yes, it was. It was. It was two words. External anti-Semitism, internal continuity. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Well, can we all do that? Yes, you can all do that. I mean, you're saying that one external Yeah, no, that's perfectly reasonable. One of each. Okay, Michael. External anti-Semitism, internal young people. That's two words. That's definitely two words. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can ask for a vote at the end if people think it's fair or not. Amanda. Run them together, right? External cohesion. Internal cohesion. You can hear the whispering online as well. <laughs> Sheila. External. I've got, I've got a minute. External understanding and internal unity. Right, so we can take it on from there. There is a series of three here, just so that you know. Quick fire round. So we know now where you see the issues. Now, same question, external and internal, but the greatest strength that you perceive of the community, externally and internally. We allowed one word only or more than one word. No, you're w one external and one internal word. And if it needs to be two, I am not going to get worked up about <laughs> it. I'm, as I say, I'm giving people time just to think a little. I think th this is a way of judging candidates. I'm not going to start with Phil again because that's really unfair. I don't mind. No, I'm still not. <laughs> Amanda. Thank you. Um, external, resilience is our strength, and internal, ingenuity. Okay, Phil. Ooh, I think that's gone off. No, does that work? It is. Um, external, organization, internal, diversity. External, respect. 
internal. Respect. And Michael. External relationships, internal working together. And now you are going to get a minute because what I would like you to do is this. I want the same two words as our biggest weakness, externally and internally. So that is not the same as the greatest challenge we face. And then I'd like you to explain how you link the greatest weaknesses that you've identified to the challenges that you have also identified. <coughs> For any lawyers listening in, this is the occasional form of judicial interviews. <laughs> but you're, you didn't hear it from me. You need one word for the greatest weakness externally and one word internally, and then I want you to link the words you've used. You can include the strengths as well if you like. But I'm interested to see coherent thinking, which isn't to suggest there isn't any. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious about this. I'm trying to test out where people are. Well, if there's a volunteer, <laughs> you mad, crazy person. Yes. Our greatest weakness internally, internally is disunity. It's not a competition. We need to all work together and be on the same page. We need to support each other's activities. We are all coming from the same place. We all have the same enemies. Weakness externally is ignorance. People don't understand who we are and what we're about. They're nervous if they're your friends to say, how are you? People who don't like us, who hate us, have their own agenda. We're never going to change their minds, but we need to get out, speak to children, to speak to organisations. We need to talk to adult groups. Um, all, the, all the things I'm hearing about people being attacked, is, a lot of it is through ignorance of not understanding the situation. I work with a chaplaincy, and the chaplain has said to me, we support all Jewish students, but we don't really understand what's happening in Israel, and it needs to stop. Thank you. Phil, yes. Um, externally division, internally division. Um, because united we stand and divided we fall. And I think what we've seen during this conflict is at times when communal organisations are not bigger than their own um, divisions, we basically um, lose our cohesiveness and lose our campaigning strength. So I'd like to bring more unity together. We've got brilliant organisations. I said organisations were a great uh, strength that we have. Let's bring them together. Let's try and work together for the good of community. And whilst division may be a challenge, I said diversity is a strength. It's not a problem to have d differences of opinion. Arguments, l'shem shemayim, for the sake of heaven are really good things. But we can use all that for positive. But we must not uh, give way to division. Thank you. Uh, Amanda, Michael, uh, I'm serious. Are you both ready? Uh, okay, well, we'll do Michael next and Amanda last. So externally understand, internal being united. Um, as far as anti-Semitism is concerned, um, many people do not understand where the community is coming from. It's important that we build relationships with the organizations that are already out there doing some work, such as the CAA. Uh, and we need to work closely with them uh, and other organizations. It's absolutely vital. Uh, as far as young people are concerned, I'm working together with them, being united with them, and giving them an opportunity to do something for the community. I was given that opportunity 40 odd years ago, and it's really important that our young people who are our future sit on key parts of the board. And one of the things I'm proposing is a president's advisory group, a COBRA crisis planning group, and a media group. And each of those, I want to have young as well as uh, uh, regional representation. Thank you. Um, externally, our weaknesses are laws. We 
we need to be more positive, we need to be more strong, we need to be clearer in our messaging, and we need to be open with an open voice and open ears. Because only if we can do that can we help to build a deeper and wider cohesion. Internally, the, my word is competition. We really need to be unified, not in the things that we do. It's not about all of us doing the same things, but it is about us all being unified in purpose and unified in vision. I have a, a bit of a master's in cross-sector partnerships, so I'm used to um, working in partnership and, and collaborating, and I also understand that you don't have to have the same objectives, but you do have to have the same vision and mission. We can be working with people that are doing things in different ways, but if we're all facing in the same direction, then we're all going to thrive. Thank you. Um, we have 25 minutes left. Um, I'm saying that because I'm going to ask a, another question, and then I'll take more questions from the floor. But I'm interested now to think about the way in which the board is organized. Mm -hmm. So we are competing, the, the hustings are for the presidency of an organization that is somewhere around, I think, 150 odd years old, maybe more. 264. 264. Right, and it was set up. Older than the United States. Yes. <laughs> Fewer wars with Mexico. <laughs> So far. Um, yeah. It was set up on a parliamentary model. And the question is this. Is that an appropriate model for 2024? <coughs> and if it isn't, what are you going to do to change it? I'm giving some thinking time here, uh, only because it's better if people reflect. Um, and I'm giving a heads up that we're going to start with Michael. No, I'm not going to do da 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 <laughs> I can see you suggesting it, Alan. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not wow. doing it. Countdown is a Yorkshire programme, but we are not doing it here. I'm happy to go. No. Good. So, um, the question is, parliament, it, this followed a parliamentary model, uh, and is that appropriate model in 2024 um, and how do we change it if we think it needs changing um, it's a, a democratic election uh, and the model is based on that um, do I think it's right uh, yes I think it is good to have democracy uh, but I think within the organization um, we are missing some pretty big tricks so where do I where do I think that the change can come around um, we have, for example, committees, and there are four main committees that will involve 60 people. Then there are some other committees that might involve another 10 or 15 people. I um, believe that um, when people apply for committees, they get turned down, um, they walk away from the board, and we've lost some really good people. And I've seen that, and I've found those people, and I've spoken to those people. Best example this week is I found a fundraiser. He's in London and he was absolutely hacked off that he didn't get elected and he's lost interest in the board. I've now managed to find him and get him back. It takes time. The 300 people, there will always be some who won't take an interest. We've got to get them involved. Um, I do believe that we should continue with the president. I don't think we should have a non-executive or... Uh, other person sitting chairing the board. I think it's the role of the president and the person has got to be presidential to lead the board. Thank you very much. I allowed two minutes and I will do that for everyone. I think this is a bit 
this may be a bit longer in terms of questions. No, we've finished. I think we've finished. Yeah, yes, I waited. Um, any volunteer? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so absolutely. We're the proudest organisation of our longevity for 264 years, the only democratically elected organisation, but we need to be relevant to today and we need to look at the democracy. And I agree with Michael. Lots of deputies ring me up. I'm not being used. Why don't you come to me? At the beginning of every plenary, Deputies fill in a skills register. Sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. Somebody was pointing at me. Um, deputies fill in a skills register. And at one point, we had an intern for six months to try and analyze this. So as people would, we would know, the executive would know, the amazing skills and expertise we have amongst the deputies. It's gone nowhere. In the nine years I've been... Um, sorry, in the 15 years I've been on the board, I've never seen any evidence of this skills analysis. I would as a president, insist that actually we have volunteers. I have set up, when I ran the division, um, a team of people who, with now the education working group, I have volunteers working with me. Deputies are quite capable of doing some of the work of the board of the staff. We don't actually need to go to meetings with government ministers, but we do have skills, and I know that there would be deputies very happy to sit and have an analysis of all the deputies' skills at the beginning of every triennium so the executive would be informed as who to go to. Michael, it's great that you found somebody. We shouldn't have to wait that, to stumble across somebody who has these amazing who has these amazing skills so that's what I would do but the way the board is democratically elected absolutely that that we're really proud to be part of that and I think that should continue well I love the board of deputies and whilst I think it could do many things better I think we're very very lucky to have an organization with a democratic mandate which is very few countries in the world have an organization in that way and the structure we have 200 member institutions and 300 deputies all around the country. If we could start using those better, we could scale activism to every part of the country. Imagine 300 deputies who know their local MP, their local councillors, their local faith leaders, their local media. Every time the board takes an, on an issue, we can pulse that out 300 times around the country and then get communities involved. For example, one of the things I want to do is, is start a parliamentary advocacy day where we get all 300 deputies at the end rabbis, chairs, and members of the communities down to Parliament on a single day to meet their MPs to talk about an issue, maybe the release of the hostages or another issue that's really central to all of us. Imagine that all 300 deputies knew their local imams and that when we had the current challenge, everyone could draw on a personal relationship so we could scale that activism around the country. Of course, the board's structures need updating. I want an independent chair because I think at the moment it's a question of the president kind of lecturing deputies and not getting the best information out of all the deputies and empowering the deputies. I want more discussion and debate. I want, and we don't need to wait for board meetings. We can use digital tools to run snap polls of deputies between elections. The board, of course, can modernize, but it should be no less democratic. It should empower and it should focus on impact. And that, as president, is what I will seek to do. Yes, Amanda. Thank you very much. Um, parliamentary, really? Um, when my first meeting, I came into the, what was our, my first plenary meeting, and people were sitting in columns, facing each other, like we were on different benches. And I walked in, I didn't know which side to sit on, I didn't know whether I should be near the top of the room or at the back of the room. I didn't understand why we were sitting opposite each other as if we were advers adversaries, when actually I joined the Board of Deputies to help make the UK better for British Jews. Now, as it happens, we don't sit like that anymore. We're either on a Zoom screen or we're in um, a room in theatre style. Um, yes, we are democratic, and yes, we are organised into, uh, into groups or ministries, maybe. Um, but, but mostly, I don't feel that we operate like Parliament. One area where we do is that I think that 60% of our deputies are involved either on divisions, on committees, or on working groups. I think that's pretty good. I think, actually, if you've got a, a democratic representative organization where 60% of your volunteers are actively involved through the, throughout the three years, it's pretty good engagement. Always more to do. And many of those groups are like all-party parliamentary groups. We can do more, and there should be more of them. We have quite a flexible constitution. There are things to change, but 
uh, and, st and lots to do, but there's equally a lot that we're getting right, and I wouldn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Thank you. Um, any other questions from the floor? Um, Paul, yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, I've been involved in communal life in Leeds, I suppose, throughout my adult life. Uh, I read the Jewish Chronicle. I've learnt more in the last hour about how the Board of Deputies operates than in the whole of the rest of my life. Um, so clearly it's not cutting through. Um, when, therefore, I'm asked, why does my shul not subscribe to the Board of Deputies? I don't think anyone would put up a pound a year to be a member of the Board of Deputies as it is. Mm. So um, what would the candidates do to change the role and perception and knowledge about the Board of Deputies? Okay, so pausing only to make the point that you find out lots of things when people ask the right questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, I'm going to ask Amanda to answer first. Thanks, Paul. Um, I'm really sad that it's taken this long for you to find out how wonderful the Board of Deputies is and the breadth of the work that we do, because we're working across all aspects of Jewish life. It's not just about anti-Semitism. It's not just about education. It covers everything from Brit Millar to Shahita to protecting uh, our Jewish religious freedoms to looking after cemeteries, and I could go on and on and on. Um, but what are we going to do? We're going to have to up our game in terms of our communications. You've heard all of us say in different ways that we're going to come out and visit your synagogues, and we're going to encourage you to join. I'd love to find a way that, that individuals who think the board's doing good work can also contribute individually to, to the work that we're doing. So um, invite us and we'll be there. Thank you. Phil. Well, my area of work is communications and campaigns, so it won't surprise you to know that I'm, I'm very sympathetic to your question and I've been thinking a fair bit about it. First of all, the board is blessed, if it uses them correctly, with 300 marketeers right around the country. We don't use them. We don't give them clear messages to tell you. We need clear messaging. I think the board does a lot of really great things, but perhaps too many things too thinly spread and it doesn't always communicate them well, as a result, we need to be aggressively communicating top-line messages. One of the things that came out of my communal contribution task force was that, you know, whilst we ask people to give us the communal contribution once a year, we sh that's fine, but we should be spending the 11 months before we ask them, telling them about the great things we do, whether that's through our community briefing, which needs to be, again, streamlined, whether it's through key top-line messaging, and whether it's through getting our deputies to speak, as well as visits that we will do. So it's a whole range of different tactics Simplify the message, utilize our marketeers, and, and get out there and meet you. Yes. Sheila. Thank you. Yeah, Paul, you know, it's not even a case of being invited. We need to get in touch with you and say we would like to come and speak to you. The amazing work that the board does from the cradle to the grave, as Amanda was saying, you know, with Britt Miller and when you're young and married, did you know the board holds uh, points the registrars, the Jewish registrars for marriage as well? Lots of people didn't realise that and I hope that they're legally married. Um, anyway, so that's fine. So, um, you know, it's, it's a fact. Um, and, and then, yes, the cemeteries, you know, there are 12 cemeteries that are un disused now and, and the board takes title um, so that, that land can't be developed. So the board covers the whole spectrum of the Jewish life and Jewish practice. And when I joined, there was a leaflet that used to be on the table when you went to shul on the Kiddush. What does the board do for you? And I actually had a row with the previous president because I said, get out and start talking to people and tell them what you do. And he came to my shul in Cardiff and people actually increased their communal contribution. So that's exactly what we need to do. OK, thank you. Thank you. Michael. I think it goes... Uh, thank you, Paul, for the good question. Uh, I think it goes beyond the visits. Um, it's how the organisation is set up. There is clearly a feeling in the community that we're not pulling together and working together coherently. I've been out to some shuls as you are well aware um, last week I was in Croydon uh, they came back and they gave me lists of questions the whole thing is still going on I've engaged with them and yes that's very important 
but we've got to now have other work streams, um, the President's Advisory Group, the Cobra Crisis Planning Group to ensure and get everybody involved in these things to make sure that we don't get caught out again and that we really cover all the things that could happen to the community. Uh, and that's how you involve the members of the schools and the communities. So that's what I would propose to do to try and make a difference and persuade Leeds to rejoin the board. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the floor? Oh, oh now we've got lots of questions. Excellent. Um, okay, Helen, you've already had a question, so I'm going to give other people the first go. Yeah. Right. Val Mogendorf from Sinai. Um, I just wanted to say that one of the ways of getting the word out is by asking people directly. I edit the Synagogue magazine, Sinai Chronicle. If any of you would like to see a copy, I can email it to you. And I would like to publicly thank Sarah Radivan for writing for the Chronicle every, for every single issue to say what the board is doing. So thank you, Sarah. Any other questions? Brian, yes. Um, I've just spent a little bit of time looking at the board's website. And do you know what I can't find on there? How do I be... Am I a member of the board? Does my synagogue contribute to the board? Do I remember from my bill, did it have a contribution on there? Does Sinai Synagogue in Leeds... Is it represented on the board? Does Is Shadwell Lane Synagogue in Leeds represent the board? I don't know the answer to those questions. Well, I know that Sinai is because I did just look at my bill. Um, <laughs> but, but other than that, there is nothing at all on the board's website that is remotely, even says which cities in the UK have Jews in it. Not, nothing at all. So, what, so the question, therefore, I can see Simon put prompt to me. The question is, what will you, as president of the board, do to actually improve the communications about what the board is, what it does, who it represents, and you never know, if you have a I want to be a member of the board button, yeah. presuming it's accessible, not like the rest of the website, that people will then be able to actually uh, join. Right. Um, Phil. Thank you so much. Well, yeah, the, the website needs a, is an overhaul and we need to express pride in the, you know, you've heard from me, pride in the member or the organizations we have. We need to do a lot more with them. Um, I want it to be really desirable to be a deputy. I want it to be really desirable to be involved in the campaigning work of the board, like I said, whether that's parliament, interfaith, media, and so on. So I want to come to the point where the United Hebrew Congregation, where Beth Amedrash Hagadol, follow Sinai's leader, join, because actually we need the voices of every part of our community speaking at this really important table. It is the parliament of the UK Jewish community, and some voices are currently not there. Um, so yes, update the website, include more information on there, but r rigorously communicate, and not just, I said, you know, talking about media, word of mouth, uh, newsletters, with through digital media, WhatsApp messages, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, heaven help us, maybe TikTok, you know, Twitter, all of these things. We need to be using all of the platforms we can to reach the Jew in the pew where they are. Thank you. Amanda. Thank you. Um, yes, for those of you that... Thank you. Yeah. For those of you that, um, that know me, you're, you may well have known that I've been advocating for us to update and revamp our website for some long time. There's a huge amount that needs to be done just with the website, um, but it needs to, and it needs to, we need to find a way that there's more engagement for deputies on the website so that they could, they've got the tools they need to do the work that back in their communities. We need more tools for uh, the members of the community, whether that's resources. We talked earlier about education resources. We need to be better at sharing what we've got with deputies and, um, and, as Phil has already said, we need to be using more platforms apart from the website. So comms is a really important area. If we're gonna meet the expectations of young people, we need to find different ways of communicating our messages. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Um, 
even I found our uh, website to be very user unfriendly. Um, and, uh, and we've got to change it. And to change it is going to cost money. I've actually spoken to a couple of friends who are in the world of internet, website building and design. And there are people there who have said that we, they will help us and contribute towards that because it's going to cost us a lot of money. And yes, it's important that we do these things, but we've got to make sure that it's financed properly. Um, the changes are needed. You're 100% correct. And that's how I will, I've started to already plan things and talk to people to do that for us. Thank you. And Sheila? Thank you. Yeah, I actually have a doctorate in language and communication. And my heart goes out to you, but I haven't had the privilege of serving on the executive for the last three years to try and bang the drum to get the information that should be on the website. So it needs updating. It also needs to be relevant. There are pictures on there from the Jewish Living Experience exhibition from somebody who hasn't worked for the board for four years, and her picture is still on the website. People say to me, why should I pay my communal contribution when you're not doing any education? And we have five copies all over the UK of the Jewish Living Experience Exhibition that I go around helping to launch. We are doing so much work. We've got Anne Silver based in Manchester, who we've got Jewish Living uh, Learning Online anti-Semitism resource that's going out free to all secondary schools. And none of this is actually being explained on the website. So I do understand, and if I was president, oh boy, would it change. Thank you. Right, we are at 2026. So we now have four minutes for four minute closing statements. And the entirely random electronically dictated order has Phil going first, Sheila second, Amanda third, and Michael last. Well, thank you, Simon, uh, for chairing us and keeping us in order. And thank you to all of you. Um, you've heard from us, and now it's over to you to decide. And I want to put to you five questions to help you make that decision. I want you to ask yourself, who's going to represent our community best on question time? Who's going to be best able to communicate with the TikTok generation? Who has the strongest connections across politics, the media, faith, and diplomacy to make our case at the highest levels? Who has the strongest experience and track record within this organization? And who has the best ideas for its future? I boldly propose that I believe the answer to all five of those questions is the same. And so I ask for your vote on the 12th of May. In the meantime, thank you for coming. Have a wonderful evening. And most importantly, I'm um, Yisrael Chai. Thank you. I have had six years as vice president, senior vice president, and often deputized for the president. I have the experience, the skills, and the passion to lead the board. I have three priorities. We need to shout louder to drown the voice of our enemies. We need to educate about being Jewish and Israel. And we need to involve all the deputies with the skills and experience to get this work done. I want to paraphrase Hillel from the Perke Avot. If we are not for ourselves, who will be for us? If we are only for ourselves, what are we? If not now, when? Thank you. Thank you, Simon. My mission is for the board to be transparent, accountable, and sustainable, relevant and responsive to our community's needs, and a source of pride and inspiration. As your Vice President of Defence, you've seen me fight the rising tide of hate and defend and protect your rights and traditions. I've got the experience we need more than ever right now to work with you to forge a stronger, more resilient community. As your next president, expect strong leadership rooted in service to the community. My promise to you is clear. I'll stand strong, protect and unify our community in purpose, and I'll listen to and empower deputies and our community. I'll create a board that serves as a beacon of hope and strength for generations to come. I'm asking for your vote to be the next Board of Deputies President for a board that is unified, empowered, and transformed. Together, let's build a brighter future for British Jews. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The board must lead and inspire confidence. More of the same 
is no longer an option. The world we live in needs strong, experienced and effective leadership. I am the serious leader for serious times. While leading Maccabi, I created new initiatives, including the largest event in the community, the Fun Run. Other posts I've held include Presidents of Marble Arch, Chair of LFI, BICC, and I've been Vice Chair of UJIA. And beyond our community, I led the Bradford Regeneration Company and served as Deputy Chair of the University of Leeds and currently Vice Chair of the Faith and Belief Forum in London. And I've run a business. We must prioritise the challenges of due hatred and poverty. We must act immediately and act now, working together as a community. If we are divided, there's little we can do. However, if we are united, there's little we cannot do. Join me today, as many others have done across five decades. Vote for Michael Ziff to lead and work with a talented team for the benefit of British Jewry in Israel. Thank you. Two thank yous. Uh, firstly, to Sarah Radovan, who has really helpfully made sure... Yeah. Yeah, you've got to clap the cards. Thank you to, um, thank you to Alan Benstock, who's been and is going to continue uh, to rush around with the microphone, but mainly thank you to the candidates. I, those people who stand for contested elections stick themselves up for disappointment. And however good you think this is, three of them are going to be disappointed. That is inevitable. And it takes real courage to stick your head above the parapet and say it's me and we shouldn't discount that as a community leadership is not shooing everyone else over the top it's going first and sometimes you just have to applaud the people who are willing to do it so thank all four of you really <laughs> Right, now we're going to swap the seats. So if somebody would play the music, please. <laughs> okay, stretch your legs, people.
Can I just announce that the spoil sports in charge have stopped me asking the question I really want to ask of the vice presidential candidates, which is, who do you want to win as president? Oh, why not? No, no, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, so, we are. Where's Andrew gone? Okay. We will we will wait a little. Um, we have here. Um, okay, I'm just checking timings. Uh, we have uh, Adrian Cohen, Denise Freeman, Lester, Lester, sorry, Jeremy Michelson, Owen Power, and coming shortly, Andrew Gilbert. Um, they are. Uh, five candidates for, I think, four vice presidencies. Three, oh, five candidates for three vice presidencies. So you've, you've missed your minute. <laughs> <laughs> we have about 50 minutes. Whilst Andrew's coming up, can I just say that um, King George III lost the United, the American colonies, but he gained the border. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, the order uh, for starting purposes is Adrian, Denise, Jeremy, Owen, and Andrew. And just so everybody understands, um, Owen is deaf. And therefore, when you ask a question, I will repeat it so that he can lip read it. That's what's going on. Um, and it is impressive that we can do it. I can think of a time when it would have been unthinkable. Right, Adrian, the microphone is yours. Thank, thank you very much, Simon. Thank you very much to the Leeds Jewish community. Uh, I'm standing on the on the basis of 40 years of fighting for the rights of the Jewish community. In the 1980s, I was president of UJS, the year after Simon. Uh, in the 90s, I helped to establish an Israel practice for an international law firm and acted for the State of Israel. Uh, in the 2000s, I helped to establish a campaign against the academic boycott of Israel, Engage, and also to establish the London Jewish Forum. Uh, and then in 2010 and onwards, I've been a trustee of the JLC and its governance trustee and held a variety of other positions in the community. We live in unprecedented times. My thoughts with the people of Israel and the families who have lost loved ones and the families of the hostages. I've been down to the Gaza envelope twice and the things that I've seen and the testimonies that I've heard are etched on my soul. Back home, we have great concerns about policing community safety and the erosion of social cohesion. But it's important that we don't allow these things to define who we are. The Board of Deputies is the democratic voice of the Jewish community, but too often the Board in recent times has been the subject matter. There's been too much controversy around us. It's important that what we do always carries with us the Jewish community, that we keep the community at the heart of everything that we do. Uh, and my, my intention is to help to preserve the, Jewish, the, the Board of Deputies, the glorious past of the Board, and make sure that it has a sustainable and secure future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Denise. Good evening, everyone on, uh, in the room and online. Thank you very much um, for welcoming us. You have a very, very proud, committed community in Leeds, and the Board of Deputies should be um, and is, in fact, the leading democratic organization. My experience is that I've been a deputy for 30 years. I have sat on the defense division for many years and I wish to utilize my experience and skill set as a solicitor advocate to protect and defend each of you and the wider community, the Jewish community in the UK. We are facing unprecedented times and the board should lead. I want to work with our honorary officers. I have a long track record, as well as including working across communally with UJIA 
um, Ajax. I sit on the Ajax advisory board and lead the board of deputies um, March, Jewish Care, and more recently involved in the um, uh, hostages, f f blow the show for hostages campaign. I'm also the only woman standing, and I will speak up for any gender issues, gender violence, and women's rights. I seek your vote, and I would be privileged to serve you. Thank you. Jeremy. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Thank you Simon, and uh, good evening, everybody. Um, uh, in seeking your support for me to become Vice President of the Board, I know that I have a unique um, uh, and increasing... Uh, Sorry, I, I can unite an increasingly polarised body which leads a polarised community. I have a record of deputy empowerment. As regional vice chair, I successfully campaigned for the appointment of a board of deputies regional manager. As a member of the CED, <coughs> the Communities and Education Division of the board, I passed a resolution calling for more deputy input before board staff and HOs meet ministers and civil servants. In Greater Manchester, where I sit on the Jewish Representative Council, I empowered educators to set up Judaism for Schools and the Northern Holocaust Education Group. I want to, minim I want to minimize the isolation of the regional deputies by having sub-regional deputies meetings and encourage proactive use of regional deputies' WhatsApp groups. Anti-Semitism must be fought by building alliances with other faiths and ethnic groups. I, t I intend to mobilise the skills of deputies in task-orientated work to drive the <coughs> agenda of the board forward. Our support for Israel must remain unwavering. We must work with the Jewish, Living, uh, Jewish um, uh, Leadership Council and grassroots organisations so that our community can continue to live in peace and harmony in the UK. A united board, empowered deputies, and a positive, dynamic leadership is what I aim to provide. Okay, Owen. Thank, thank you, Simon, for such a positive introduction, which I really appreciate. Good evening, everyone. It's lovely to be here in a sister progressive community because most of you know I'm just up the road in your liberal Jewish community. Now, it, there's an absolutely no doubt whatsoever in the next triennium. The board's work will really be cut out for it as it will be all hands on death as we deal with the three issues of anti-Semitism, anti-Zionism and indeed anti-Israel. However, there's also no doubt that the board will want to, in a spirit of resilience, to be productive and to develop. And it's for that reason I'm standing as for vice president to be a voice for progressive inclusion and diversity with the particular remit looking at disability and regional inclusion. So I hope to have your support. Thank you. Yeah, hi, I'm Andrew Gilbert, and good evening. It's lovely to be again, as like Owen, in a, another reformed synagogue, and it's about lovely to be back here. I look around in this room, and I see people who have been part of my life for many years. Adam Glazer from Maurice Wynetza, Helen Lewis back in the ATID programme many, many years ago, Dolphin um, and, and, and Val, who have been uh, with, with me obviously all the way through my life in Limud. And we've been involved, and together I've got next to my good friend Adrian Cohen, and we ran London Jewish Forum. And what do I learn from all of that? I learned that actually our community is in a pretty good shape. We're doing incredible things. We continue to take on challenges. I looked at the 2021 census and I looked back and compared this community in Yorkshire with that of 20 years ago. And the community has changed. The community has gone through the pandemic. We've gone through resilience. And now when you look at the community, it's, oh, the community in Leeds has got there. It's got less than it was and it's there. You look at Calderdale and you look at other places around Yorkshire. There are 10,000 Jews in Yorkshire. There's also 10,000 Jews in Essex. 
We've also got the fact we come up north for three, and it's great to be up here, and I'm really happy as a Yorkshire for my university days, and it's great to be up here. But let's be clear, you know, we have a situation that um, we've got communities all around the country. We must be, we must be a community, an organisation that works for where the Jews are, where the Jews are fewer, and where the Jews aren't. We've got great friends in politics, we've got great friends in every part of the community, and what we've got to do is we're going to do it together, listen to our deputies, work as a team, and we're going to do good things. Thank you. Um, a word. We need, apparently, for the sake of the stream, to hold the hand mic like that. So we, otherwise they can hear you in the room, but they can't hear you on the, on the stream. Um, right. Any questions from the floor? <coughs> it is, yes, I can see, I can see it, Hayden. <laughs> I just thought you might shout at me for asking a second question. This, the night. No, I um, thought about it, but at the moment you're good. <laughs> um, I just wondered if you could uh, all talk to what uh, you feel support for Israel looks like. Okay, so the question is, can you talk to what support for Israel looks like? Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to start with Denise. We must promote our bond with Israel insofar as we are UK Jews and Israel and we are British Jews and Israel has the right to, to engage in its own self-determination. That does not necessarily mean um, that we um, stand, uh, we, we will necessarily support everything that Israel does but we must engage in positive messaging. The Free the Hostages campaign um, must remain forefront. Of course, it's a tragedy um, in Israel, and we are alive to the humanitarian position. But, um, Yisrael Chai, there is that unalienable bond. Um, we must message carefully and with consideration, and be agile, because it's, each day is a different day. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew. For many years, I was the uh, chair of the Allocations Committee for the Zionist Youth Movements. And I used to, beforehand, meet the Zionist Youth Movements, and they'd come and see me, and we'd talk about the process. But all of them I asked a question, who's your Zionist role model? And the reason I asked this question was to engage people, and then I'd like people here, perhaps, to think who your Zionist role model was. Because in, we've all got different ones. We've all got a different understanding of Israel. And there's a beauty in that. And if we want to understand Israel in its fullness, we have to learn more, we actually have to be able to talk more about it, we have to legitimise and, and work with different opinions in the community. And by doing so, we can come to a much greater understanding of the reality of Israel and also connect an earthly Jerusalem with a spiritual Jerusalem. Yusham Shamala with Yusham Shamata. Thank you. Yes, Jeremy. Thank you. Um, I am a proud Zionist. Uh, both my daughters live in Israel. Indeed, last night, one of them gave birth to our eighth grandchild. So yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. So, uh, you know, um, uh, I get there as often as I can. Clearly, yeah, there are divergent it. views. Closer. You need to hold it closer. That's it. Is that better? Yeah. I'm sorry. Clearly, there are divergent <laughs> views about Israel. I think uh, we must be very, very firm in the fact that we support generally the existence of the State of Israel, the right of Israel to defend itself. I think we have, because Israel is a very much a state in development after 2,000 years of statelessness and powerlessness, are we surprised that we're struggling to do all the shaking out, where, where, which changes us from diaspora Jews with no power to do anything, um, and uh, we, uh, to uh, you know, obviously running our own sovereign state. We've got to support that, but on the other hand, we, have, we do not get involved in Israeli internal politics. We must avoid that. Thank you. Owen. I actually dread this question. However, because I, I really do think it comes with such great responsibility 
and to, to an extent, it, it's very, very, very difficult to come up with, with a fair answer. But on a very personal note, I have to confess that my support for Israel is almost unconditional because basically at the, at the end of the day, that is a, the Jewish security place. And that's just the way I see it. I'm not an expert. I seek advice from others, but my support really is unconditional. Thank you. Thank you. Adrian. Most of the community, uh, the British community, British Jewish community has a strong emotional attachment to Israel. Uh, we're relatively near. A lot of uh, a lot of us spend time in Israel either on holiday or we have simchas in Israel or other reasons to go there. Uh, a lot of people have got homes in Israel and family as well, as Jeremy illustrated, uh, and, and as in my case as well. Um, and, and I think that's, uh, that, that certainly marks out our community. There is data on this about the community's uh, relationship with Israel. Um, and uh, the majority, I think it's something like 90% of Jews consider Israel to be an important part of their identity. Those that define themselves as Zionist has, has, has declined, but that might be just because people issue a kind of ideological component to it rather than an emotional one. Uh, but it is, we know it's becoming a more in, in complex question because of the current troubles, but also uh, because of uh, the recent political makeup of the Israeli government has caused a lot of issues. But I think, nevertheless, notwithstanding that, support for Israel is, at an emotional level, is very resilient, and we should represent that. Thank you. I I'm going to ask, because I, I want to probe the answers that we heard earlier. So the presidential candidates were almost unanimous, almost unanimous, that the biggest challenge was anti-Semitism. What I'd like to do is a similar exercise to that which we did with the presidential candidates. What I'd like from each of you is a one-word answer to how you s propose to start dealing with that problem. A one-word answer to how you propose to start dealing with the problem. If anyone thinks they can solve anti-Semitism entirely with a one-word answer, <laughs> please declare yourself now and the Mashiach will have arrived. <laughs> we can go straight up to Jerusalem on the basis that it is uh, unlikely just using historical precedents. I'm not making a theological proposition here. Uh, one word on how we start. Um, I've blathered long enough, I think, to allow most of you to do the thinking. Um, because I know quite a lot of the vice presidential candidates, I'm going to start with Adrian, because that is like starting with Phil on the first one. It's handicapping. If I can, if I can give a humorous answer, um, because I, I know Simon as well, um, if I had to give a one-letter answer, given, <laughs> given the chair's prowess, I would say X, because our chair spends a lot of his time confronting anti-Semitism uh, in the Twitter sphere, very, if I may say, very effectively. But yeah. tell, tell the Lady Chief Justice. <laughs> I, I also know uh, someone who uh, uh, is acting as an intern for her at the current time, so if there's some influence I can use, perhaps. Um, anyway, um, education, if you had to have, a f have one word, it's, it's, there's so much misconception out there um, and misunderstanding. Sorry? Is that? That's lots of words. Education, education, education. <laughs> I'm going to repeat the question because I didn't say it to Owen and that's my fault. So one word, not yet, one word on how you propose to start tackling the challenge of anti-Semitism. Okay, not, not yet because I'll give you a bit of time to think. That seems fair. Um, Jeremy. Education. 
No, no, it's fine. Well, I'm an people, people are allowed to have the same answer. What do you want to be? I'm an educator. Denise. Unity. Owen. Education, of course. Sorry, that's two words. <laughs> or three. <laughs> Andrew. Coalface. Yeah, I was going to say in Yorkshire that's usually two words, but we'll give it to you. <laughs> yep. Um, so moving on from that, um, if, if the answer is essentially what those three different answers have in common is work. Work. They all require people to work. So the next question <coughs> is, in the next triennial, give us the two or three headlines that are going to allow you to put the board to that work. So in the next triennial, the two or three headlines <coughs> that will allow you to put the board to that work. Yeah? Mm, thank you. It's a pleasure. We're going to start with Andrew because he's gone last both times. Ooh, he has another microphone, which is helpful. So can I ask you this is not one word. This is no, no, word. this is a whole minute. <laughs> okay, then just checking the... So, no. So I think the core of this is around cultural sensitivity and cultural competence. I believe that what we've got to do is, in, is really go out there in whether we're working with the police, whether we're working with the NHS, whether we're working with TfL, that put that managed when we looked in their communications room to have Al Jazeera on their news screen. Um, that we've got huge challenges out there about what's going on. We've got to work in our schools and on campus. We've got to work with the lecturers. And what we're doing is cultural competence and cultural sensitivity. Two very different things we're tackling. And how we do it, so that's the big challenge. And the same things will happen on campus, the same things in schools. But it's much, much bigger. It's not just schools and campus where we're got to deal with it. It's now the workplace and the infrastructure organisations. When we spoke to TfL, 40,000 frontline workers. How are we going to train them? How are we going to do that? We're very, uh, there. That's going to be the challenge. Cultural competence and cultural sensitivity training. Thank you. Owen. Simon, the board has the resource already because I, I see the Jewish Living Experience exhibition as a brilliant resource to educate. And just to give a good example is I've got the good fortune to bring the exhibition to Salford in August. And the idea there is to have the exhibition in a community centre on a housing estate that's very diverse. And instead of focusing on school children, we're going to focus on the adults and invite them all to come along to view the exhibition but not just that, we're going to work with the council to get NHS staff, housing association staff, with the view to attend and to help break down barriers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a few years ago, the government instituted a, a review called the Bloom Review. Do governments do God? And the answer, of course, is no, not very well. So clearly, like Andrew, I also believe, and I've, I've started to do some preparatory work on this in Greater Manchester, uh, I also believe that uh, we've really got to get at the adults, as well as the Jewish Living Experience exhibition, as well as uh, uh, Judaism Online, uh, sorry, Jewish Living Online, I think we've really got to get at the, um, the um, uh, people in, in, in civil service, in the police, in the NHS, etc., etc. It's a mammoth job. It requires getting a lot of volunteers. It requires a great deal of planning. Um, all I've been doing at the moment is just mapping out what's going on, which is, to say the least, very patchy uh, and uh, much less than I thought. So uh, that's the way I think we go about it. Thank you. Adrian. Uh, 
Th thank you. I think there are a number of components to this. Obviously, difficult to answer these things in a minute, but as Andrew says, training is a very important part of it. So I've been involved in through Lund Jewish Forum in training counsellors uh, in um, in the in anti-Semitism, in, and in doing that, we partner with the CST. Uh, and part of the answer to the question is the need to partner with relevant organisations that have the skills. And I think part of Part of the Board of Deputies' task is also to work out where its key competencies lie, where it can also partner with people to more optimal effect. Uh, tra training is something that should be rolled out much further. So I've been speaking to uh, a senior consultant in Manchester regarding uh, training, part of onboarding for doctors. Uh, there's, a, there's a huge need to deal with anti-Semitism within the NHS. So that's across the field. Um, intellectual heft is really important. There's a lot of stuff going into... Uh, analyzing and, and understanding contemporary anti-semitism dr david hirsch and his center for Con study of contemporary anti-semitism as an example and finally uh, social media and the media and that's an area certainly the media is an area the board has been has got a good record um social media is again somewhere where perhaps you have to work with other people involved in that sphere thank you denise i said unity because we need to be more unified in terms of our communal organisations and work together, not disconnected. Um, I've already um, spoken personally to the CIA, the, uh, the, the leader of the CIA and the JLC, and we need to be unified with confidence so that we can represent our position externally to the wider community, that we're all advocates Jews know instinctively when there's anti-Semitism. Each of us interfaces with the wider world and we need the educational tools, media skill set and also the activism as well to influence wider society positively with positive messaging and to stand loud and proud and not cower with fear in our community. We need to be unified internally and externally. Thank you. I want to move on to talk about unity in a different way. So we have on this table a pretty good selection of what might be called modern jury. There are, there is a whole section of the community that has virtually nothing to do with the Board of Deputies, and that is the Haredi community. The question then is, how, if it is possible, do you bring the Haredi community into the unity about which you've all now <coughs> talked? I'll give people a bit of time to think. So the question is, how do you bring the Haredi community, which at the moment pretty well sits outside the board, into the board's ambit? I have a volunteer. I have a volunteer from the progressive community. <coughs> Um, which is interesting, I think, um, and it's an interesting topic because I suspect quite a lot of the people about whom I'm talking, uh, they would not necessarily perceive much of a difference between the five candidates. Yes, Andrew. So, with Lund Jewish Forum, but also with the board, the door's open. The door's very open with the Haredi community. So the door is very open with the Haredi community. So what we get up to is there are issues on which it's really complex. It's complex on education and what happens in, in, in Orthodox schools. But what we found is that particularly the pandemic changed things. And we're working with the union, the Adas, we're working with Hatsola, we're working with Birkel Hoylim, we're working with Interlink, we're working with Shonglin, we're working with organisation after organisation in the Haredi community because they have to work together. 
They've got £7.5 million from Sadiq, uh, the Mayor of London, for um, kosher upgrade for school meals. That's not just for the work very closely with Pardis House, the uh, Haredi School in London, uh, per, 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 and we worked with Hutzola. They're going to do the injections, the vaccinations, into paid for by the NHS. In, Haredi, in, in the Haredi community for early, uh, we're working, we've got, we set up the Haredi Health Alliance, uh, we've worked, we're working with the newsletters in the Haredi community that come out midweek. It's all up there. They're happy to work with us. Don't ask them to join the board, just let's work together. Thank you. Denise. Well, the board already works and represents the Haredi community and the Haredi community um, know that fundamental issues such as Sherita, Brit Mela, burial rights. I've been, I've been involved in relation to the uh, coroner issue with Marin Hassel in, in London and also through back channels. Uh, a friend of mine was, uh, was the mayor of Hackney and a former deputy and uh, with close links to the Haredi community. My, mic, my mic's um, just failed. Yeah, I um, it's working now. Um, I also think as a woman there is this softer issue I've acted for members of the Haredi uh, community in family matters and women have a, a softer but um, very powerful influence as well so there's room also um, for female to female engagement and influencing that way as well thank you Thank you. Jeremy. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, in Greater Manchester, the Jewish Representative Council set up the Jewish Strategic uh, Group, which is unique in the country in that it, it consists of literally wall-to-wall -wall, uh, representation from liberal and reform and secular on one end to, uh, to Haredi on the other. I think we've got to go down the route that Andrew was already talking about, certainly with the London Jewish Forum. I think in Greater Manchester, that's what we're doing. I think the board really has to sort of link into that. Uh, and somehow we've got to get hold of Gateshead, you know, and to get them to work with us on various issues. Once they see, once they see that we've got the year of government and we've got the year of local government and uh, they start to, well, they, they certainly are, to a certain extent, woof them, you know, what's in it for me? But if we can show them that there is something in it for them, gradually they get used to working with us and uh, hopefully will uh, you know, come closer to <coughs> us. Thank you. Owen. If we're serious about inclusion, which I think we are, that we really must work hard to bring the Haredi community into or onto the board, for want of a better word, now, as you probably also know, that in Salford, where I live, we have a very sizable Haredi community, which I, I just love. But there's one particular aspect of all this that really means a great deal to me, is that I'm working with one member of the Haredi community who is a councillor. My aim is to try and encourage him to join the board, but we meet regularly for coffee to discuss social action because that's something that's important to him. But what I love is the fact that he knows that I'm progressive, I'm out, I'm disabled, I'm gay, and yet he retweets my social action posts. Thank you. Thank you. Adrian. Uh, the, the union which represents Haredi Judaism walked out of the board in 1972 uh, and, and I met 10 years ago I met the two deputies both now sadly passed on who led the walkout uh, and they did so because they were unable to accept the pluralistic model of the board but the answer to this is to build alternative structures to include the Haredi community and that's and that's what we do so for, on a personal level for example I've sat for many years on the finance and planning committee of the Good Israel Housing Association which is the Haredi 
uh, Housing Association. I currently sit on its Risk and Audit Committee. And, and as Andrew mentioned, in all the work that we do for the London Jewish Forum, when we meet with the police, when we meet with trans, uh, TFL, Transport for London, um, and other agencies, we always have with us representatives of the Haredi community. So it's a kind of status quo and an understanding. And likewise, if you come to the board social events, like our Hanukkah events, you'll always find a, a number of Haredi representatives there. So it just calls for being a bit more imaginative and a bit more pragmatic in the way that we approach things. But there's definitely interest on both sides. Thank you. Any... Oh. I was going to say, any questions from the floor for... I can see, Brian. I'm just waiting for... If anyone hasn't <coughs> asked a question... Brian, the floor is yours for a brief question. So it says on the website that it's the British Board of Deputies, uh, Advocacy, Democracy and whatever the third community. Coming up definitely <coughs> without a doubt, this year we have a general election in, in Britain. How do you see the role of the Board of Deputies uh, within, the, within the period of the election? So for Owen, the question is, how do you see the role of the Board of Deputies in terms of the oncoming general election? Okay, we have it, and we will start with Adrian. Uh, so as with previous elections, the Board will be very active. Uh, the first thing is that we produce manifestos for the elections. That's always... We just produced one for the mayoral election and the London Assembly elections in London, uh, and we'll be doing the same thing for the general election. Uh, and, uh, and likewise, I know Manchester and other places, manifestos are produced. So that's a very important piece of work, and we try to get the endorsement of all of the parties, the main, mainstream parties and candidates for that. And then secondly, there'll be hustings as well. So hustings have become a very big feature of the election season. Uh, and again, in the local elections, we're currently going through hustings. So at the moment, Andrew and I are deluged in hustings because we're both participating in hustings as candidates, but we're also hosting hustings <laughs> for candidates. Uh, so we have uh, hustingitis at the present time. Um, so it's, it's, always, um, it's always a very busy time in the election, and, 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 and building on the manifesto and hustings is obviously is an element of lobbying as well to ensure that the platforms of the parties is aligned with our interests. Thank you very much. Jeremy. Yeah, I mean, uh, as, as, uh, as Adrian said, it's really, it is, it's a case of it's hustings, it's man we've got the manifesto that's being developed in Greater Manchester, we've also got the um, local election manifesto uh, particularly aimed at Greater Manchester, there will be hustings, and, and when, uh, we've got hustings for uh, the Greater Manchester Mayor coming up on April the 18th, and you're all invited. Um, so, uh, again, the same thing will happen, but clearly also I think it would help if deputies had the uh, confidence to approach uh, local candidates and ask for their opinions as well. I think this is something we need to do more of. Um, we've got a very interesting situation in Bury, uh, Bury uh, South, because it's for the first time it's brought in the strong Jewish area of Broughton Park normally locked up in a solidly Labour Salford seat. This should be very, very interesting for the first time in their lives, their vote actually matters. So, um, yeah, really. So, uh, so that basically, it's, uh, yeah, it should be fun and games. I should point out we were going to have um, election, uh, election hustings for the mayor here, but as the prospects of anyone but Tracy Brabin being elected are roughly the same as David Miller being elected president of the board, <laughs> they were cancelled for lack of interest. We had 12 people coming. Um, no, 12. We had 12. Owen. Well, I think it's pretty great that the board is already on to it as far as the upcoming general election is concerned because... We've had a wonderful opportunity as deputies to participate in discussion on what should go into the Jewish Manifesto. Now, I, there's one particular issue that I feel very strongly about, which is to ban conversion therapy, which the 
present government has ignored for a very long time, had gone back on its promise. But it was really great to be able to ask that this is something that's included in the Jewish Manifesto. Obviously, we will all get involved discreetly <coughs> in hostings and whatever over the next few months. Thank you. Thank you. Denise. Um, you've heard about ma uh, the manifesto that the board um, is spending time crafting. You've heard about hustings for the uh, elections, the mayoral elections, and nationally, but projecting forward, you, each of you in this room and those listening online and indeed nationally need to have the information and easy accessibility to the manifesto to also have access and assistance in terms of messaging, going to your um, candidates in, in if you want to organise hustings and the confidence to know that the board is representing your interests and will represent your interests, whatever government um, of the, the day is. And the board does lead on that. The board is the most um, highly regarded organisation which exists to defend and serve our community. And rest assured, there is commitment across not only the deputies at local but national level to ensure that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Andrew. Yeah, sorry. It's very intriguing because we've got 24-7 access to politicians. It's unlike anything in most countries of the world. It's, we have WhatsApp groups in the London boroughs where we've got in there the chair, the rabbi of every single synagogue, the school head teacher, and in there we've got the council leader, we've got the assembly member and the MPs. And you pick up these groups and you're watching, busy, we're watching West Streeting responding in dialogue with our rabbis. We're watching two MPs in Westminster talking about the questions of, our, of, our, of the rallies and then, and then watching Nicky Aitken, the MP, raising it the following day in questions, in questions in the House. I cannot tell you that any other community has got any access like this. Let, let, let me finish. Um, in terms of there, I've used this time. We've been wondering who's going to take over from Galloway because we can't have him there. So I've met with the leaders of Berry, I've met with the leader of Rochdale, talking with the Labour Party, because each of us are politically involved, and some of us very seriously so. And we have to get our Jewish politicians there fully, uh, fully active in that way, work with the congregations, and we'll then do the work with the newly active MPs, and it all starts all over again. So I'm going to ask the last question before we have the closing speeches. Um, and we're going to take the opportunity to pick your brain. So the question is this, since the lockdown, it is arguable that the center of gravity in communities has swung away from shuls. That the way that people demonstrate Judaism has moved away from the shuls. I say it's arguable. The question is, do you agree and if so, where do you think the next center of gravity for the community is going to be? So it's arguable that the uh, center of the <coughs> Jewish community has swung away from Schultz. If you, do you agree? And if so, where do you think the next center of gravity is going to be? It's a local issue we're discussing. <laughs> But I may as well, you're all here. <laughs> so I'd be mad not to ask you, even if we all think it's nonsense. Right. Uh, we, yeah, all right. We're going to start with Denise. Um, broadly, I do agree. Um, there were the reformed progressive communities, though, managed to keep the faith by having lo um, uh, online. Um, uh, uh, services and so did the, the orthodox in, in part um, I see the centre of gravity amongst social media like Jewish Community UK I see different expressions of Judaism I'm a music photographer as well as being a lawyer and I photograph a lot of musicians that brings me into contact 
with the IBC, Israelis Building Community, the 710 Human Chain, and directly grassroots activists. And um, art and culture and expressions of other Judaism. And also, people are also disenfranchised um, with just the shul model. That said, there has been an uptake in people praying and coming together because they want to express their Judaism and their faith. And communal prayer cannot be ignored. So shuls do have an incredibly valuable role. And the board's job is to deal with it all and definitely manage and communicate. Thank you. Thank you. Owen. Oh, I, I think we recognise for quite some time that shuls are not necessarily the centre of the universe where our communities belong. There's also no doubt that COVID has changed things a lot. I do think the board wants to recognise and reach out to those that are, don't belong to any community or not affiliated to a community or, or whatever. I think the future lies with community groups. I personally love the idea of trying to get groups like <coughs> the Jewish Deaf Association to affiliate with the board, to get Keshet to affiliate to the board. It, it really is all about diversity, reaching out, and not being afraid of change. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy. Um, I belong to a, a shul which is, um, although it's under the auspices of the chief rabbi, it is actually um, uh, very much uh, a shul in which um, there are very, very few um, three days a year Jews. The people you see in the shul on Shabbos morning are the people you'll see on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. In that respect, we bounce back. Um, maybe some of the ladies, not all the ladies have, have come back, but uh, certainly I think all the men have. Now, that's not always the case with some of the bigger shuls in Greater Manchester. Um, and clearly, I think there's also a generational issue. And I think that's something we've really got to uh, tackle. That's, uh, you know, because people who basically get their Judaism online. Um, uh, a lot of people get their Jewish education online, and I think that that, that is something that we're clearly going to have to uh, deal with. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and that's really, I think, where the board goes. I think Owen's right. That's obviously community groups will also be important. You yeah, know, we have a number of that have joined the board. Sorry, sorry, sir. We have a number that's joined the board, and we should encourage them. Thank you, and admirably brought to a close when you saw the red light. Um, Andrew. See, I don't recognise this. And I'm really, uh, you know, and, and, I, and I watch Becky nodding ahead at this. You know, um, I, the, the, what we saw during the pandemic was a transformation. Suddenly we could go to shul in Israel at three in the afternoon. I could go to Paris at four. I could join Albi Chait and watch his, him bringing in Kabbalat Shabbat and in the most incredible way on the North Dot Shore. I could go to my own minyan online. I could then go at 10 o'clock at night to Central Synagogue in New York, and if I was still up in two in the morning, I could watch uh, from Los Angeles a car. Uh, Shabbat was different. Suddenly you had models that were, we could learn from. And your own, we've now got members from Leeds who are members, uh, are members of Fincher Reform Synagogue. And their members still here, um, but they're also members of us because we do things differently. So it's really exciting. The post-pandemic synagogue, we did sessions online attended by Orthodox Reform rabbis and leaders of the United <coughs> Synagogue. It's not a crisis, folks. We're going to do it better. The synagogues are the centre of our community with the schools. They're the ones that are doing it. So stop this nonsense and actually love our communities and let's build them. And Adrian. Uh, uh, so, with respect, I'd switch the word uh, arguable with variable. So, um, it really, it's a very diverse community. So, in the Haredi world, the, the, uh, or Haredi light, if you want to, if, I don't know if it's presumptuous for me to describe Jeremy's shul in that way, it's, it's you know, it is back to business in, in the shuls. Um, outside of the Haredi world, it is, it is much more... Is much more varied, I would say. Uh, the synagogue I go to, Denise goes to, South Hampstead, is extremely busy on the Shabbat morning. And I think the trick there is pick up on Phil's idea for plenaries is to do the Kiddush. I mean, it has the most, 
it has the most incredible kiddish, um, and, and that and that undoubtedly gets people through through the door. But as Andrew says, you know, there's there's no one model here, and I think the important point is to be open-minded, not judgmental, and find the ways that work. And and I think Owen just said it was. It's also a generational issue as well we have to deal with. It's not necessarily how we do things in shore or out of shore, but how we get young people to connect and that we have to be more imaginative about. It wouldn't be a hustings if somebody hadn't said, if you feed them, they will come. <laughs> so we've done, having done that, we can move to closing statements because every, every box has been ticked. Um, and almost, I'm really upset by this, it's almost from there to there, but unfortunately the electronic randomizer has said Adrian should go first, not Andrew, thereby uh, spoiling it, but it's Adrian first, Andrew second, Owen third, Denise fourth, and Jeremy fifth. That, thank you, thank you, Simon. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for, for hosting these hustings. Uh, I found these hustings uh, very stimulating and helpful for me. It's really, it's really important for us to hear what all of you have to say because that also impacts on our own thinking and helps us to grow our own ideas. And likewise, it's important for each of us to hear each other and what we say because I think all of this is a part of a nurturing process. The, these are very difficult times and they are times of great anxiety, but they've also shown the resilience and the determination of the community and there's much to celebrate. But we do need seasoned HOs, I think, to, to be elected to the board. We have many, many challenges, but it's not just a job for the HOs. What we do have to encourage and inculcate is a sense of common ownership amongst deputies and we can only do that through meaningful consultation and engagement. And I just want to say that the board is something I've been involved with for 40 years and it's something that I'm incredibly proud of. It's one of those things it's easy to knock, but I have to say it's a real pearl that the community owns and we should cherish it. Thank you. Andrew. I could have said everything that Adrian said, so I'll say something else. <laughs> yeah. And that is I want to talk about who you send to the board. I want to tell you down the most important thing. It's not about what the deputies go out and do. It's about the relationship between the communities and the board. And then the communities have to realise that the board isn't somewhere where it's random who you send. If you send your leadership to the board, or your young leadership, it's next generation training. I look at Toby Coonan, I don't know who he is, but uh, related to this community, and lots of other wonderful people have gone through the board. But also, they come and they stimulate and they bring their messages. And I want to turn around to every community that doesn't take part in the board or doesn't really know who their deputy is or doesn't think seriously about them, and to make sure that they send serious leaders to the board and see this as a partnership between our community and yourselves. And it's work we do together, and that's what will make a difference. Owen, closing speech. This, this evening, we've had a perfect example about what or how disability inclusion might look like by Simon's expert chairing this meeting to make it really possible for me to fully participate. So I really, really hope that the board take a very, very strong commitment on disability inclusion. And the way to get this to start to happen, please support me by voting me for VP. Thank you. Denise. I'm genuinely cross-communal and will go into any shore and would welcome the opportunity to come to the regions more often and engage in the dialogue. I want to be able to serve the community as a long-standing deputy with experience not only in the Defence Division but the Communities Division and I want to support whoever is elected as President and collaboratively work with the, our fellow HOs. I also feel that there is a real gender equality issue here. I'm the only woman st on the, on here. And the board should provide inspirational leadership for women. I was on the Atidle leadership course with um, Helen and um, Andrew and, they sh uh, and Edwin. 
and there should be um, also um, a route map. I want to encourage more um, younger deputies, the under 35 <laughs> observers, and a leadership match, uh, and I want us to be loud, proud, and confident to represent our community to government and beyond. Thank you. And Jeremy. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I am the uh, chair of the Regional Deputies Assembly and Council, and I want to become one of the vice presidents. And I ask you these questions. Do you want a regional deputy at the top table who has successfully fought to increase the board's presence in the regions? Do you want a fighter who has removed barriers to regional deputies' involvement? Do you want someone unconnected with any political movement who can unite deputies behind an agreed agenda? Then please give me your first preference vote for Vice President. Thank you. Right, it is... 9.32. Um, thank you again to those who've helped, to Brian, to Simon, to Alan, to Sarah, um, and to the candidates, I repeat, for sticking themselves up to be shot at. <laughs> Do me a favour as you go. Don't applaud in here. Say thank you to the CST as you walk out. Have a good evening and a safe journey home. Thank you.